we're all here to welcome to the stage the Noisettes. <laughs> Oh, yes, that was my first kiss in the whole series. I enjoyed that. Do that more. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> how are you? I'm all right. How are you guys? Good. Yeah? Good. Awesome. Awesome. So let's start by talking about the Olympics, which I reckon you're kind of on message here. You look like a flame apparently right now. Apparently, I'm on point with the whole Olympics theme. And yeah. uh, apparently, there were these um, three, like, Airbuses that were painted white and gold. Yeah. I thought, yeah, maybe that would have been a really good album cover. Looks brilliant. Thank you. It's amazing. Thank you very much. So I know that you guys have both been a part of quite a few of the Olympic projects that have been about music. Yeah. So tell us about them. Um, I, I think the biggest sort of like task was doing the whole um, BT River of Music gig because um, it was quite a sort of special moment for us because um, we um, got to work with these two amazing girls from Malawi from a ja the Jacaranda Orphanage and um, thanks to Sirius we were managed to fly them over, have a few days rehearsal with them and just do like a complete reworking of a, of a sort of noisette set. So it was very Afrocentric because that was the theme with the Africa stage and I was able to draw on my, um, my um, African musical heritage and they performed some of their own original material. So that was amazing. We had a Senegalese chora play with us. I think there was about 10 of us 11 of us on stage? About 11. Wow. Yeah. So that, that, was, that was fantastic. You know, Pleasure Gardens is a great venue. Some of you were there, I think. I recognise yeah. you saw people <laughs> there. I saw you lot doing that. Was it good? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then obviously um, yesterday, it was about 40,000 people. Mm. Where's Hyde Park? Hyde Park, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> There's been so much going on. Have you been watching yeah. the sports as well? Um, we've caught a few snippets of things um, on the odd screen here and there, and um, and um, it's just been strange. It's been surreal, like yeah. you know, just sort of seeing all these medals being now collected, and just seeing all the different nationalities wandering around. London's just like a big open-armed party, and then I see this my face on the side of a bus, and it's <laughs> like, it's very surreal. But it it's a, it's an amazing time to be in London right now, and. Um, you know, it's definitely one that's a moment that's going to go down into history. You nodded, Dan. Have you been watching a lot of stuff? I've seen bits. I don't have a TV, so right. I'm listening with my... Uh, You're the second person I've had on this stage. It's like, I, I just reckon artists, musical artists, just don't do telly, yeah? Yeah, just the radio. Just, I just yeah. listen to Radio 3 and Radio 4. Yeah. And, and FIP, which is a and French... Google. And Google. And Google. <laughs> and, yeah. and Google Radio. And YouTube. 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 Like, YouTube. 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 product placement. <laughs> So let's talk about you two. You're back with Vengeance. It's been a little while. Where have you been? We never left. OK, go on, tell us, go on. We've been um, travelling around yeah. and um, having these really amazing musical experiences. Um, I suppose it all kind of started off in, started off in LA mm -hmm. and then in New York mm -hmm. and then in Belgium, in Brussels. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got about... 50 songs together, or maybe more. Something like that, definitely. Yeah, so um, it was really hard to choose what to put on the album. But it's a very international album. Wow. It's, it's for all how folks get, of shapes and sizes and ages. How do you get this opportunity? <clears throat> how do you get to be able to say, yeah, we want to just explore and experiment? Um, I think it's, it's a combination of, of luck, and it's a combination of um, just, just knowing how to sort of put across um, the kind of project that we wanted to do to, yeah. the, to the label that we were, we were working with. And, um, and uh, I suppose getting asked as well to, being invited to perform, not to perform, but to co-write songs yeah. with people like Neo and all the interest from people like John Baptiste. I think when the label saw that they really wanted to work with us as well, they were like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, of course, of course you need to, yeah, yeah, you need, you need to go to LA. And first of all, it was like, we really want to go to LA. Yeah, budget, you know, I don't know. And then suddenly people are like, no, they, they should come and work with us. I think they expect us to do something very difficult or avant-garde, and it's like, well, actually, we want to work with Neo and, and John baptiste What? What? <laughs> oh, okay. We want to work with everyone. Anyone. Anyone. Oh, right. everyone. <laughs> That's what you want. Yeah. Like, but, um, I want it. <laughs> some of it's accidental as yeah. well, you know. Um, uh, working with Chuck Harmony was awesome. He's a sort of kind of like R&B, but quite avant-garde pop producer. 
and he's worked with a lot of people, um, the DC, a lot of amazing R&B singers. He did the, um, who else he was working with? Loads of He did Kelly's, Brown, that amazing, Kelly's. weird electro track that he did yeah. with it. That was wicked. So what, yeah. you're giving me me very mixed messages as to what the sound of the new album will be. You've worked with so many different influences. Yeah. What, what can we expect? Are we going to be bumping and grinding R&B style? <laughs> um, I think when you put Love yes. Power on, you've got to turn it really, turn it up really loud. Yeah. And cut your jeans into batty riders <laughs> and start getting down. But then I think if you're listening to Ragtop Car and you're traveling and you've had like a bit of a stressful day, that will definitely mellow out even the most hardest, hardened soul. And then you've got moments like Traveling Light, which I can't describe Traveling Light. I mean, we sampled a train from, um, is it like Connex South Central? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. Um, and that, that was part of the drum beat. Um, it's like a cocktail. I'm playing drums on that It's as like well. a cocktail piano ballad meets like some dubstep kind of weird yeah. things. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we're always like, we just keep our ears open. We're really genuinely excited about what we do. And um, I think it's important to play a lot of this. Um, uh, there's a lot of big production on the album, but hopefully today we want to show you the, just the nuts and bolts and the skeleton of the song, which is basically from the bottom of our hearts and it's from, from our soul. So we're, we're, we're happy and brave to take, you know, to take production to the highest heights, but as long as we can still play it, just yeah. the two of us, or just, you know, we're going to have Bobby singing some awesome harmonies with us, and then we know it's, it's, it still works. And yes. Yeah. How important do you think, for people that are watching, travel is just to kind of enrich you as a person? Do you think it's... Because I think the Olympics has, as a whole have opened our minds up to the world. Yeah. You know, like when I watched the 200 meters last yeah. night, I felt like yeah. all my Jamaican jeans like tingling. Like, <laughs> and, and all three and, of them. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but anyway, uh, um, wow. Um, uh, do you think you know you've been lucky enough to go around? Would you, is it something that you would promote to get out there? Definitely, yeah. I think it's traveling is sort of like the best schooling you can ever go to when you sort of spend time in different places. You learn so much yeah. that way. Yeah, I mean, and, and also sort of like regionally, like having sort of toured in the last sort of like extensively for the last three or four years, you realize that different regions in England are like different countries. Yeah, yeah. you know, can the accent, the food, how they serve chips <laughs> in like you know, Newcastle is different to the way they have chips in, in how Scousers eat yeah. chips. And it's just like the Saxonians and the crazy yeomans when you go down to Bristol. They Lothians. Just, Lothians up in Scotland, Grampians in the south. Um, but um, travel is, is really important. And I think that um, we're really lucky that we live in London because it's so diverse. And sometimes we take for granted how um, other places in England or in the world there's not much diversity there. So I guess, um, you know, that's our kind of our little job to keep it going in mm. the music that we do and, and just, just, just promote, promote, um, promote ourselves out there and make it that our music's not too exclusive. And mm. I think even though as, as bonkers as we are, I think that's why we really love pop music because I think once you get it as a craft, you can, you can reach so many people. And I think if you're saying something at the right time from the right place, anything can happen, dreams come true. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the music industry? Because this is your third album. You have, you know, done a lot of things. I've seen you in all different sorts of spaces. I've yeah, known you for, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I've known you for a long time. Yeah. And it's amazing to see, you know, a real, like, interesting journey of of, of music and what you guys do. Yeah. What, how has it all changed? What's happened to the industry since you began? Do you reckon? You always drop me in that one. Oh, <laughs> I'll start if you want. Oh, no, I'll start. Yeah. I'll start. Okay. No, you start. Um, yeah. The music industry's changed. Actually, you start. Okay. Um, <laughs> Whoa. One thing I've noticed is, um, is what's great is that uh, I think a lot of the showmanship and the flamboyance seems to have come back that um, when we sort of started but kind of running around kind of, you know, in sort of in the, in, in the mid, late noughties, everyone was like, you're so dressed up and you're so flamboyant and you're so, where does this come from? I was like, you just need to meet my aunties, <laughs> my family. This is just how we roll. We're very, very expressive as people. And, um, 
And I think we were taking our cues from a lot of the sort of great characters um, that we've loved in music. People like Kate Bush and like Tina Turner and, Hendrix. you know, Hendrix, the Reviews, Bowie, the, you know, the, the Soul, you know, the Supremes, Marvin Gaye, Stone. Sly and the Family Stone. So, um, and I think that um, performance and like touching people has always been a big part of what we do because we love to share it. And, um, and what I've also, so that's great that that's making a bit of a comeback so we don't stick out so more on the bill. Um, but what else is, I've noticed is that the, um, the, the, the UK charts, they're, they're sort of like, uh, it seems like the bands are really, really on the wane at the moment. The radio doesn't have a lot of love for bands the at chart, the moment. Yeah. And, um, there's loads of bands out there. There's yeah. millions of there's them. There's so many yeah. bands. Really like good bands UK, out there. Yeah. International bands that are trying to kind of, you know, just get more, get one foot in the door and it just feels like... It's a glass ceiling it's, somewhere. Well, I, I wouldn't, somewhere. I don't know what, I don't know what it's like for those bands, but I feel um, this country used to be like pretty famous for producing all these legendary bands and the US were really sort of inspired by a lot of bands that came and acts from here in the sort of 60s and 70s and Hendrix even broke here before he broke in America and, yeah. and it's quite interesting that um, it's, it's amazing that, that the girls them are doing amazing like a lot of dominance at radio with um, female solo artists and <clears throat> there's the odd bloke as well that <laughs> gets me to go in the door but I think that um, it's a bit sad to see that that sort of disappeared and I don't know if it's because it's you know to do with you know the whole politics behind what people think sells and yeah. whatever it is, I think that, that a lot of the variety and the choice has kind of disappeared from the charts, from the radio, but not from the music scene. Because thanks to you guys, you're still buying music and still supporting music made by lots of different artists on the musical spectrum. So it would be really, really nice if that variety was reflected a bit more at radio and we could be like, yeah, this is the UK, we're forward. This is, this is, this is how we rock things in the charts. We've got this, we've got that, we've got this. If you look at the variety of stuff yeah. that was in the charts in like the, the 90s or the yeah. 80s or the noughties, it was just, yeah, I mean, it was just wild, the amount of people of all shapes and sizes and colours that are in the charts. So it would be nice to see a bit more of that balance. But then again, you know, it's good to have something to work towards. And, you know, it's never going to be it's never going to be easy, and um, you've got to go and, and, and show them why you feel like your music can make a difference to people, whether it's in the charts or not. What I feel from you is, you know, so much passion, and I know that you are more of a quieter person in the group, right? Which is yeah. fair to say. It's true. Until yeah. about mid ten to twelve. <laughs> After midnight. The, wa the wet and the full <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you, you know, you mentioned that there are solo artists and there are male solo artists as well. Like you look at the rise of Ed Sheeran and yeah. then you look at, you know, people like Paloma, who you know really yeah, well, we yeah. know well and we love. Do you ever feel like, do you know what, would we be able to do this better separately? Why not just like try and, you know, do our own singular pop package? Um, I think what keeps it fresh uh, at the moment, um, is that we both do kind of things with other people quite yeah. a lot and you know I've, I've had loads of fun working with people like Dennis Ferrer and doing Hey Hey and just kind of you know sp um, making sure that I spread my, my musical wings. We both got to bring different things to the table, to the table yeah. a lot because otherwise it just gets boring you're like oh it's you again Johnny Three Riffs or it's you again always singing the same scat song. Jemima Three Riffs. <laughs> yeah Jemima Three Riffs. But um <laughs> But, um, but yeah, we, we, we've definitely got like a lot of like individual um, music and stuff that's just backed up. And I think when the time is right, then that will happen. But this album, I think, is really definitely, it sounds so cheesy, but it is for the fans. And I think we had um, so much sort of stuff going on after the last album that kind of took us away. And we did quite a lot of touring, but it was, it's very hard when you're a band and you're trying to break things internationally, you know, different times. So things got released at different places at different times. So, um, you know, who knows what will happen when we turn the next chapter. But I know that we'll both have each other's. Your, da Daniel will have my blessing if he wants to go and do a, what, what is that? What's that project uh, you wanted to go and do? I is don't know. Solo, um, to join Anvil or something. What's that? <laughs> that, that band, did you see the that's film? The solo Anvil. project, so, well, whatever, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, he's keeping it obviously secret, just in case. Out in the schoolyard, did I get that one? Yeah, yeah, I don't know, he might go and have a rap career or... Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe. Amazing. Yeah. Could happen. Why are you guys laughing? Are you laughing? <laughs> Good. <laughs> What's your space? Yeah. What's been the highest and the lowest? so far? 
Mm. Mm. Ooh, where did it start? Um, of this summer, yeah. it's definitely been doing all the outdoor um, festivals and the concerts and the prep, like the designing the outfits and oh, just it's been so much fun that I'm now getting a bit. I'm getting like the sort of grumpy girlfriend that's about to say bye to the boyfriend at the station. Like you just ruined the whole holiday by going, you know, I see you later. When I'm <laughs> starting to get that, oh no, we've got like you know, like one more gig until the album comes out in three weeks, and then it and then it's allowed to fly. So yeah, the highlights were definitely the, the River of Music yeah. Africa stage for me with Grace and Modelo and just playing a lot more. African music and connecting with like the, 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 the voice and the drum and the rhythm, you know, just developing our stage show, meeting you guys. <laughs> yeah, what about you? Um, the highlights would definitely be exactly what you said, um, but also, <laughs> <laughs> like, well, the BT River of Music was amazing, it's back everywhere. Um, and um, and also just being involved, being around during the Olympics in London yeah. and being part of it is yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It doesn't, I don't think I'll see it again in my lifetime and maybe not you as well. Yeah. I um, think, yeah, I mean, the whole kind of, as well, on, on this album, what's been really great is that we've got so many, di oh, I love, are they Terry D's? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God, they're amazing. Ooh. Yeah, sorry, quickly right. change of subject. <laughs> um, what's been great is playing with other musicians. On, on this time round, because it really brings out a different side of your voice, a different yeah. side of your bass playing or guitar playing, you know, you playing more instruments, different instruments, having the string section, it definitely feels like we're kind of at like a little, we're at a sort of apex, apex moment. Yeah, definitely. And so there are no downsides. Not unless someone goes like that, and then it's sort of, it's a bit like a seesaw, but uh, yeah. we're definitely at that mo moment where someone on the other side of the seaside has been really heavy, and they've gone like that, and you're going, <laughs> uh, and you're no. thinking, oh, what's going to happen when I fall down? No. Uh, now is good, now is good. That's good. Yeah, now is good. Now, you two, obviously, like, you are like brother and sister. You're really, you, you know, your chemistry, you, you totally can read each other's minds, yeah? Um, yeah, sometimes. You know, like, many, you know, if that's true, how, you many, know each other. how many fingers have I got? Three. That was true, actually. I did have three. Uh, one number of them, I think. That's down to you form swearing. <laughs> 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 and you met 14 years ago, right? At um, the Brit school? Yeah, 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 we met, yeah, when we were, I was at school and he was at college. Okay. And, um, but the music thing, again, is just a bit more recent. It's funny. Yeah. He's. Daniel's quite good at persuading people to do stuff, even though he's sort of playing the sort of quiet, sort of cavalier type character. Yeah. yeah. But he has his ways. Like <laughs> he has his ways. Um, yeah. If yeah. I were to ask you both, so if I was to ask you about Shingi, how she's changed in those in those years, what was she like then, like compared to how she wow. is now, and vice versa? <laughs> um, I'd, I'd say that. Um, you are answering my behalf. No, <laughs> are you no, reading no. my mind? I'd say that she's she's <laughs> she. trying to speak for me right now. Yeah, but I, um, she's not changed. No, she's not changed at all. I think that we've we've both kind of grown in our own ways, but she's not changed yeah. one bit. It's like it's always there. The the I think it's like Sense Spinal Tap. If you see those yeah. two characters that used to go to school in Squatney, they got their jokes like, Squatney. oh yeah, well, I can't remember their song <laughs> they used to sing, but. Yeah. But it's the same thing. We still sing that the same old jokes come out, the ones that applied yeah. about 10 years ago. Yeah, the dry ones. Of, they still come out. Stuff. But yeah. Frankie baby, that joke. Oh, no, babe. <laughs> You're not going to go really there, but let's not do that. <laughs> we'll just quote it. <laughs> okay. um, I think yeah. what's, what's been awesome is that we've made a lot of them. Um, I think what, what develops people is, is the people that they meet and all the friendships and the relationships with people musically and, you know, platonically or whatever. They've had. Um, probably the greatest impact and also we haven't necessarily um, we haven't seen each other every day for like yeah. the last sort of 12 or 13 years there's been times when I've gone to college or he's gone and done this or he's gone traveling in Australia and we just it's just you know one of these people that always kind of like look out for you and it's and it's a pleasure to make music and, and do art because it's it's quite a sort of sensitive thing you know when you do an art and you need someone that's got your back and that's supporting you and I think those are the people that we've still got around us now. Um, when you're making art, music with people, you need people that are just, that you can just try any old crusty idea out and not care <coughs> if they're gonna go, yeah, <coughs> let's park that idea and then, yeah, yeah, move on to the next one. So you, you, you really need that, you know, it's, it's uh, in the studio, you just need an environment of like encouragement and um, he's definitely, 
good one for that. And I just bring the vibes and like the champs and <laughs> loads of girls and people. And we just start like listening to the tunes and, you know, we bring our little sort of, I bring my little focus group down from <laughs> South London or whoever I met or the cab driver from Madison Lee. I'm like, do you want to come in? <laughs> Have a quick listen. No, seriously, tell me if you, what do you think? What do you think? So, you know, it's, yeah. There's a reason why it sticks together. That's the reason why Definitely you're still. It's, yeah. I don't want to yeah. try and explain it because it's so magic yeah. and I'm scared that if I find out whatever the secret is, then maybe yeah. it will be like, yeah. yeah. But it's still happening, so it's a good thing. Isn't Definitely. It? Yeah. So Definitely. I've got some Twitter questions and uh, I'm going to start with Selena, who says, what advice would you give to someone who's wanting to make music for a living? Um, I think just... I think stick to your guns, but also think about all the other, whatever, what you want to do in music to kind of see how that translates into other sectors of work and always have that in mind, but always have your main goal in mind and move closer and closer to your main goal, but be like a Christmas tree. It sort of starts out big at the bottom, but as it moves up to the top, it gets narrower. Yeah. So um, just start broad and then narrow your field down. The more you progress and the more you can get by doing music without having to do other things to pay your rent. Yeah. You evolve to that, but say that in a nutshell. Yeah. How long did it take you guys to just have the band as the sole sort of income in your lives? Oh, in the last sort of four years, really. Yeah. We yeah. got, yeah, we got um, our first deal um, in like 2007 yeah. um, from Motown in America when we'd been knocking at doors here and there wasn't much room or space for labels with the with a band, with this um, South London brown girl singer with a bass guitar. <laughs> I just don't think that they got it. And they were like, no, nah, it's all about landfill indie, right? It's all about, yeah, you know, cool. guys, and, you know, <laughs> four white guys that look amazing. They look the same and they all sing together. And I'm like, yeah, but it's just music. As long as it's pop, right? Yeah. They're like, yeah, come back next week. And then what, we came back a year and a half later yeah. with an album and a deal with Motown, so it's fine. That's crazy to me. Have they not seen you live with the most rock and roll performer I've Do ever seen? Do you know seen? what's funny is that you'd be surprised how many people in the industry actually go to the gigs anymore. It's often yeah. the people who are lower down in the offices the that actually go to the gigs. It's the a, it's a junior A&R people. It's, it, it's unfortunately <coughs> not really the people that sign the checks because I guess maybe they just don't feel that's part of the job, obviously. But um, but um, we we yeah we 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 had to, we knocked on a lot of doors yeah. and a lot of people said no. And then when when the sort of U.S. market sold back to the U.K. market, what they thought a great band we were, then all the sort of a lot of the sort of the tastemakers and the journalists were like, oh yeah, well you know apparently L.A. Reid has had them took them out for lunch and threw them on a private jet from a Rihanna concert. So let's, let's give these guys a shot. Um, so back to the advice about your friend, Selena. You've got to enjoy it and you've got to do yeah. it with people you love. Whatever the, in fact, I think sometimes it's sometimes sod the goal. Enjoy what you're singing about. Think yeah. about, can you, can you sing about that for the next five years if you have to? Because you might have to. And are you going to enjoy singing yeah. that song? And there's songs that... DJ I mean, is my... <coughs> not that <laughs> it, but... <laughs> there are songs that, you know, yeah. that... Um, that we now sing, and I'm like, I'm so glad I still enjoy singing that song. Yeah. And I think that the journey is really important, and, and the music industry is not what it was, and there's no point kind of complaining about and expecting everything to come easy, because if it does, it could go just as easy as it comes. So you have to enjoy it, man. I have a little laugh, don't mm. take something too seriously. I think sense of humour is so important. It's key, darling. Like, yeah. All it's the key. people that I've met in the industry, the ones yeah. that that I truly like and learn yeah. from are the ones that really find the whole thing quite funny. Yeah. Because it is of funny. It, it is, is. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. Totally. totally. Um, Boy yeah. in the Mirror says, uh, what's your favourite 80s song? That's a great name, Boy in the Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> so is he in a band? Or she? We can find out, at Boy in the Mirror on Twitter. Excuse me, what, what's your favourite 80s song? Oh, um, the, Oh Superman by Laurie Anderson, even though it's not much of a song. I mean, it is a song. Sing it so that we can... I have to do the. Imagine <laughs> this guitar's going. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, Superman. Oh, Josh. <laughs> oh, Mom and Dad. <laughs> like yeah, Mom and Dad. That's really impressive. It's an out there tune. <laughs> At Yay Gregors 
says, do you guys plan on coming to the East Coast uh, in the States anytime soon? Definitely, yeah. Um, fingers and toes crossed, we should be in New York in the next week or two, for an in the next two weeks for an amazing Where's festival. Where's the camera? I want to look at and it. And to you go and pedal it. the new album on our heads, like the African aunties, and just get people, <laughs> re reacquaint ourselves. We've got a lot, a lot of great friends out there, so... Um, Oh no, you're not gonna do that. It's your turn. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's not my favourite 80s song. Uh, I it was. Ride the tiger. <laughs> no, that's yeah, Ronnie James Dio, rest in peace. Uh, Johnny Hill says, What can we expect from the new album which we've discussed? And I think that in fact that's kind of perfect to ask you to perform some of it really. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to sing exactly for us right now? I'm, we're not sure, but we're okay. going to sing <laughs> some of the new album and, so, and, okay. and, um, and a golden oldie yeah. or right. two. Oh, thanks for speaking. Is that all the questions? <laughs>